Good afternoon to everyone. I am Nadine al kosafi Marketing Product Manager. Before I start this webinar, I would like to wish you the best for 2021. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our webinar dedicated to the prediction of forging defects using four simulation software. At the end of the presentation, my two colleagues, Max Binego, hello Max, and Stefan Andrietti will join me for the question and answer session. Now, the camera will be turned off and it will be back during our conclusions. Before we start, just a few words about the GoToWebinar platform and how to operate the control panel. You can use the orange arrow to minimize the control panel to the right. Here we see this, then if you want to minimize the, the control panel, you can use this orange arrow. By default, the microphone will be turned off for all participants. At any time, feel free to type your question in this zone. During the question and answer session, I will get back to you and answer these questions. This is the outline of this webinar. First, I will start by showing how the simulation can predict closed die forging defects. For example, underfilling, faults and lapse detection, piping defects, and improper grain flow. The second part is dedicated to defects originate from the starting material, such as shear mark, central looseness. In the last part, some defects detected in cross wedge rolling, extrusion, and ring rolling will be investigated. Then first, I will start with the closed die forging defects. The underfilling. The underfilling is the, is the defect that appears when some section of die cavity is not completely filled by the flowing metal. Here, an example of a crankshaft forging. We can see in this zone the apparition of the underfilling. Simulation software can be very helpful in determining the cause of and solution for these defects. In Forge software, the scalar contact available in the result selector, here we see this, uh, the scalar contact, helps you to detect the underfilling zone. By using this scalar, several areas here that are in red can be detected that are underfilled. Using cutting a plane, it is possible to quantify the underfilling. Here we see the metal, and we can see the distance that we have between the metal and the bullet, and we can quantify uh, between, the, between the bullet and the die cavity, and we can quantify the underfilling needed uh, that we have in this case. To go faster in the detection of the underfilling defects, the custom action can be used. The custom action is a feature that is available from the version 3.1. To create the custom action, you need to display the contact, then to set the legend. Once you define, you define your custom action and the interface, then here you have custom action and you add your custom actions that will create for the underfilling. You can, with a single click, use this, uh, this underfilling defects and detect it for any simulation or for any project. Let's go to another defect, faults and or laps. Then faults or laps uh, are, are defects that appears when two surfaces of the metal faults again each other without welding completely. Here a case of a breast fitting is a present. And we see how the simulation can predict this defect. Then here to the right, we have the numerical simulation results. We can see by, that by analyzing the metal flow, we can detect this defect. Results are in very good agreement with the reality. As well, to, de to detect uh, faults and laps, a, a point tracking uh, feature is developed in Forge to easily detect this defect. Then how to use it, you need to go to the ribbon and to click on show faults. Using point tracking, these features allow the identification of, of laps at each stage of forging. The following and the determination whether the fault moved to the flash. 
in the next slide, we will see an example and we will see in it how we can detect that the fold is moving to the flash. We can measure as well, thanks to this uh, point tracking, this, thanks to this feature, the depth of the fold. As well, this feature gives the ability to perform a reverse analysis and understand the origin of the fold. Here an example of faults and lapse detection in a femoral implant forging case. Like I said, so to use the pointed tracking, we need to go to faults, then click on show faults. This allows the visualization of the faults that we see here in the graphical view. As we see in this video, points in red indicate where the material enter and cell in contact with itself. Then here, when we have a very important concentration of points, we can detect the apparition of the fold. We can see that the fold move to the flash of the part. Then here, the, more the fold appears, and we can see how it, it moves to the flash. In force software, the adaptive remeshing that we see here, we have an, an, an adaptive remeshing that, that happens during the wall simulation. Thanks to the adaptive re, uh, remeshing, we can accurately uh, detect the faults. Let's go to another defect, piping defect or slow throw. It appears when the material is sucked at the end of the forging. In this case of extrusion, the potential causes of the flow throw apparition are due to the, to the geometry of the cavity. In, in numerical simulation, the underscan marking grid is very useful to detect this defect. Here in this video, the marking grid is defined in red, and we can see the apparition of the aspiration and the extrusion case in two, in two locations. As well, uh, here we see, uh, then in gray, we use the underscan marking grid, and we can see here in this 3D case, the apparition of the uh, piping defect in two zones, on the upper uh, part of the, on the upper surface of the part and on the corner. Here, another industrial case where we will de detect the piping defect. Then the piping defect has been detected as we see here in this image by using the underscan marking grid. In green, we see the underscan marking grid that was defined in this simulation, and we can see the apparition of the piping defect in this zone. During forging, another defect that can appear it is the improper grain flow. The deformation leads to the grain flow orientation. The grain flow lines of the metal may not be formed in the proper direction. Here, the grain flow do not respect the specification needed to guarantee the part mechanical properties. This grain flow doesn't respect the specification needed in the head of the screw. To the right, this grain flow uh, respects the specification needed, the SAUS CAR8 specification needed in the head of the screw. We can see the lines and the form of the lines and the head of the screw. Here, a forming sequence of a hex tox head screw is presented. We will see then here in this case of forming sequence, we have several uh, stations. We will model then the forming of the screw. We see how the marking rig is useful to detect the improper grain flow or to check the quality of the forging part. So here we see the grain flows that, ha that we have during the wall forming sequence. Then thanks to force, it is possible to follow the grain flow during the wall forming sequence. As well, we can see the continuity in the grain flow, then which gives him a very good property of the grain flow. Then it is. And if we compare with the, because it is a, a screw, then if, do we have the specifications that we showed before? We can see here that our grain flow is similar to the one presented before. Let's make a recap on the closed die forging defects. 
and how they can be detected and analyzed using specific tools and forge. For example, underfilling can be detected by analyzing the contact scale. And to go faster, we can use custom action to detect all the underfilling with a single click for any simulation. To identify the folds, a point tracking feature is available. And it is possible as well to identify the fold to use the marking grid. Piping defects can be detected with underskin marking grid, as we see. As well, it, the piping defect can be detected by analyzing the velocity scalar or vector. In fact, in zone where the, we have piping defect, the velocity scalar or vector is neglected. To check the quality of the grain flow or to check if we have an improper grain flow, we can use grain flow fibers. And even we can follow the grain flow fiber during the wall forming simulation. Now we will go to other defects. We will go to the defects that are originated from the starting material. These defects appear due to the shearing or the casting, or the casting super operation. Then let's start with the shear mark. The part is made in three operations here. We have a bar shearing operation followed with, by two, for, with two forging stage. Here we are interested first in the bar shearing operation and in the results. Here we see the evolution of the effective strain during the, uh, opera uh, during the shearing operation. The effective strain increased on the, surface sur on the sheared surface as we see here. And as well, due to the shearing operation, we can see that the, that the, uh, the sheared surface is not uniform. Here we can see the, the, uh, then the shear surface. We can, by comparing to the reality, we can see that even re in reality, it, uh, then we obtained a shear surface that is not uniform. And our numerical result is in good agreement with the experimental one. Improper shearing operation may cause the apparition of high residual strain on the final part. Marking grid can be used to track the sheared surface. Then here we see the, uh, the marking grid that has been used to detect, uh, to see, uh, to, track the mar the, to track the sheared surface. We see the evolution of the marking grid. Then in gray, we have the marking grid on the sheared surface. We follow this marking grid as well in the next operation of the forging on the blocker stage. Poor center quality may lead to rupture or crack on parts during upsetting. And now we will talk about another defect, the central looseness. We'll see how together uh, we can detect if, the, if we will have a cracks on the center of the part. Then, then, then to follow the center looseness, natural fiber can be used. To create the natural fiber, you need to create uh, then a marking grid with one cylinder define, and define its diameter. Here in this video, we follow the central looseness of the crankshaft during uh, the forging of the crankshaft to guarantee, to guarantee the quality of the piece and to check the, that there is no crack. Let's make a recap on how to detect defects originate from the starting material. The shear mark tracking can be done by using marking grid and this is very useful to check if the improper shearing operation caused the apparition of high residual strain on the final part. Central looseness that leads to rupture or on parts during upsetting can be identified using the neutral fiber. We didn't talk about porosities, but the porosities, these are the things that can happen during casting. Thanks to the direct export from Tercast to Forge, it is possible to follow the evolution of the porosity and the carbon concentration during the forging simulation. As well, in Forge, we have several user variables that are available, such as Yamanaka or Niyama porosities model. We have a carbon concentration uh, user variable. Then 
it is possible to model in uh, tear cast the casting simulation and to uh, make to take the results and to follow the evolution of the porosity in forge. Here we will talk in this part on cross wedge rolling, extrusion, and ring rolling uh, uh, defects. During cross wedge rolling, a cylindrical billet uh, is rolled in the cross direction between two wedge shaped tools. Several defects may appear during the cross wedge rolling, and this is due to the tool geometry. The function of the parameter of the tool geometry we, will ha we can have. Uh, dif uh, different uh, defects. The torsion may appear uh, on the bullet. Here we see the detection of the torsion during a cross wedge rolling case. The torsion was detected by using the marking grid. Thanks. Like I said before, function of the cross wedge rolling tools parameter, several defects ca can be present during the cross wedge rolling process. For example, Mansman effect sliding, and section reduction. Here, these cases, simulation, I will present both the three cases, simulation one, where, we'll, where we will see management effect, simulation two, and simulation three. Let's see together. Then, first, in simulation one, the cross wedge rolling condition are close to the risk zone. Then, internal cavity can be present. Here, a hot, here in numerical simulation, a hot critical value of Latin Croft and the center of the part is a present. Then we have a critical value of Latin Croft of 1.5, which in, uh, indicates the presence of risk zone. In simulation two, the cross wedge rolling tool parameter leads to the sliding defects. We can see ge the, ge the, ge the geometry of the part. Here, analyzing the form of the final part obtained by the numerical simulation, the sliding defect is present. In simulation three, the cross wedge rolling tool parameters lead to section reduction. We can see how the initial uh, diameter goes from 22 to 11.5 millimeter. In the center, a critical value of Latin cross is uh, present. We have a value of high Latin growth uh, higher than 2.7, which indicate maybe the breaking of the pot. Now we will talk about another defect, the chevron defect. This defect appears during extrusion. The chevron defects are the cracks that appear in the center of the extruded parts. In fact, areas of heavy plastic deformation do not meet in the center. Chevron defects are found when the material moves faster at the boundary of the part than at the center. Numerical results, as we see in this video, can be used to predict this defect. In this example, to, the, to analyze and to detect this uh, damage, we use the normalized Latin Croft criteria. In four, several damage criteria are available. Here, a case of cold rolling of a steel bar uh, is, uh, are present, then several cases of cold roll bar are present. These cases has been pro, uh, have been provided by Christophe Vachet of EGTEC. Then thank you, Mr. Vachet. To detect the surface defects, we use Lometer uncovered criteria. We can see here then the damage that uh, appears numerically. We can see that our uh, the numerical result is in very good agreement with the experimental. We can see the form of the damage on, that appears on the surface of the cold rolled bar. Down we have in this in this another case we have another type of defect that appears on the surface. This defect is similar to the one that we see before to the chevron defect, but this time this uh, this defect appears on the surface. And to detect it. Uh, UGTEC use the Lometer uncoupled criteria. This now we will go to an, to a case of ring rolling. This is an L section ring rolling case. This case is provided by Passan National University, and is described in the in this article. Then I invite you to read this the following article if you want more uh, information about this case. 
The aim of the study was to detect and improve defects that appear during uh, ring rolling process. The major defects that, that, that occurs are the unfilling and the groove on the bottom of the blank. Here we see the evolution of the metal. Then here are, is the numerical result, and we see the evolution of the, of the metal flow during ring rolling process. Then after the second contact, we can notice the apparition of an unf unfilling zone. And here we see as well that the lower part of the blank is compressed by the mandrel and the driven roll, and the bending is cause, uh, will cause the groove, the apparition to, and the generation of the groove. Numerical results are similar to the reality. We have the unfilling and the groove depth, and are similar, the numerical results are similar to reality defects in terms of position and shape. In fact, using numerical simulation, it is not only useful the numerical simulation to detect defects, but as well to correct this defect or to remove them or to reduce the, this defect. How to remove the unfeeling defect? By increasing, here we will see together in this case, how we reduce these defects. By increasing the height of the blank and uh, the flange angle of the blank by three degree, we, have, we see here that numerically, with the underfilling is removed. As well, we see this, uh, that the underfilling has been re removed even in, the, uh, in reality. Now, how to, uh, how to get a better result for the groove the defect? Then by increasing the depth of the groove of the driven roll, we go from, uh, from A, which was the convention, conventional test to, to B, the modified uh, geometry. And here we can see that the numerical result is a good investigation technique to detect defects and to improve them. Here, for example, the groove defects uh, decrease from 0 0.77 millimeters to 0 0.4 millimeters. Then thanks to the numerical simulation, we can detect defects and as well, it is possible to improve or eliminate them. Then several defects can occur during the, these processes. Now we will see together, then we see together how by analyzing, uh, how, how we can detect management effects by analyzing the Latin Croft criterion, as well to identify or to show the breaking of the part we can uh, during cross wedge rolling, as well we can analyze this, uh, the Latin Croft damage criterion. To detect the sliding during cross wedge rolling, we can analyze the metal flow, to detect torsion, it is possible. Uh, we advise to you to use the marking grid. Chevron defects that appear during ex extrusion can be detected by Latin Croft uh, uh, damage criterion. Surface defects that appear during cold bar rolling has been detected by using the Lometer five damage criteria. During during ring rolling. Two the defects has been detected, the unfilling and we groove and the groove. And as we see here, to detect these two defects, uh, we can detect them by the metal, by analyzing the metal flow and the contact scale. Force incorporate several tools to detect defects. The marking grid used in the detection of faults and piping defect and improper grain flow the point tracking useful to detect the faults. Custom action can be used to go faster in the analysis of any of, uh, of for example, the underfilling. Results such as, uh, the results such as, uh, for example, the contact can be used to analyze the underfilling. Uh, the velocity can be used to analyze the piping defect, for example. To check the crack evolution, we can use the first principal stress and the triaxiality stress. Forge incorporates several damage criteria. Some of them are coupled with the rheology, such as Lometre, and others are uncoupled, like Oya Oyane, Tracy, Rice Tracy, Latinicroft, Brozo, and others. 
Interoperability between Tercast and Forge allows to the, allows the follow to follow the allows the following of the evolution of the porosity and the carbon concentration through the forging simulation. Then thanks to the coupling between Tercast and Forge, it is possible to follow the uh, to follow the evolution uh, from Tercast uh, then uh, uh, to follow the porosity evolution. One second. Okay, here in this here in this video that we will see together to the right, it is a, a work that we are still working on it. It is a work that is in progress. And here we see a new way that we are developing to uh, detect the crack uh, on the part and the crack evolution in the part. This new approach is based on the face field with an adaptive remeshing. Then this work is still on the, in progress. It is an accurate and uh, innovative way to initiate the crate the crack and to follow the, its propagation on the part. Thank you uh, for your attention.